All right, this is exam one for physics 201. The first one is which answer has the appropriate sig figs for the mathematical operation? Well, uh, multiplying and dividing so you keep the lowest number of sig figs. This number only has one sig fig, so the answer is A, which only has one sig fig. What is the area of the projection screen? Well, that projection screen is approximately three by three meters, so that is about 10 square meters. Which of these is a reason that a standard of measurement is not appropriate? Why would a standard of measurement not be appropriate? Well, if the standard changed, it wouldn't be appropriate. That would be bad. If the standard was not available to everyone, that also would not be appropriate. Uh, however, if it, based on some obscure physical constant, that doesn't really matter. The speed of light is an obscure physical constant, yet we base the meter on it. And if the standard smells really bad, obviously that, that doesn't really matter. So the answer is one and two, and that is option E. Is this equation dimensionally correct? X is in meters, A is in meters per second squared, M is in kilograms, T is in seconds, so that's one over seconds. So I have meters squared, kilogram over second cubed. And then here I have kilogram is for, me for M. V is in meters per second, but it's squared. So I'm gonna square them both. A is in meters per second squared, and V is in meters per second. That's one over meters per second, so it's seconds over meters. So this cancels out one of our meters, cancels out one of our seconds, and we're left with kilogram meters squared over seconds cubed, which is the same, so it is A, yes. A house is 45 by 32 by eight. What is the volume of the interior of the house in cubic centimeters? Well, 45 times 32 times eight is 11,520 cubic feet. And we wanna convert that into cubic centimeters. There are 3.3 feet in one meter. We have to cube this term. And there are 100 centimeters in a meter. We have to cube this. If we put that in, we get 3.2 or 320 million, 3.2 times 10 to the eight cubic centimeters. That's option C. Since 1983, the standard meter has been defined in what should the following? Used to be a specific bar used to be a fraction of the distance. It has never been this, so it has to be A, the distance that light travels in a particular amount of time. You drive four miles at 60 miles per hour and ignore the four miles at 40 miles per hour. What is your average speed? You drive at a longer time for the slower speed, so that means that your average is gonna be less than 50 miles per hour, that's C. Describe the motion of this particle. The slope is initially positive and small, but it gets bigger. So it's an increasing positive velocity, that is C. You throw a ball into the air and it returns to your hand. Which of these plots best describe the motion of the ball from the moment you release it to the moment just before you catch it? You throw a ball up, it goes up, and then comes back down. Initially it's gonna have a positive decreasing velocity, positive decreasing velocity, all right? These two have negative decreasing velocity, so it leaves us with either B or D. At the top, it goes to zero. That's it here and here. Both of those have zero. And then as it comes down, it has an increasing negative velocity. So that gets rid of this one and leaves us just with D. In this graph, what is the instantaneous acceleration at point C? I want to know the slope at point C. The rise is minus two. The run is one. So it's minus two over one, which is negative two. That is A. You throw a ball upward with a speed of 10 meters per second. Assume there's no air resistance. What is its speed when it returns to you? It is the same, that is B. Which of these statements about vectors is incorrect? I did not count this problem. I gave everybody credit for it because there is, I had a miss, a typographical error. Or I just sort of wrote it incorrectly. All of these statements are correct. All right, they're all correct. Uh, the one that I intended to be the answer was A, but I would have to have write it differently. I would have said that a, uh, a vector's component can be greater than the magnitude of the vector. A vector's component can be greater than the magnitude of the vector. That is an incorrect statement. It is not possible for the component to be greater than the magnitude of the vector. But I didn't, I didn't, I didn't count it at all. But I gave everybody credit for it, even if you got it right, or even if you got it wrong, I gave you credit for it. All right, the following figure shows vectors A and B. What is the result of the difference A minus B? Well, minus B is just the opposite of B. So if I draw A like that, and then minus B, this is A minus B, 
and so this is a minus b and that's the same as d the vector a is components ax and ay if ax is less the magnitude of ax is less than the magnitude of ay which of these is the possible direction for vector a well if ax is less than ay that means that this angle has to be greater than uh, 45 degrees and if they're both positive that means that it has to be in the first quadrant so my vector has to be right here and this has to be some angle that's greater than 45 degrees and that is some angle greater than 45 below the positive x-axis that would be B the vector A has a magnitude of 12 meters and B has a magnitude of 25 which of these is a possible solution well you want to look at the maximum and the minimum all right, the maximum would be 25 plus 12, which is 37. The minimum is going to be 25 minus 12, which is 13. So somewhere, a number somewhere between 13 and 37, that is A, which is 32. All right, the position of an object as a function of time is given by this function. I asked you to, uh, what is the acceleration? All right, I was looking for this. I was looking for you to find the velocity function. To find the velocity function, you have to take the, the derivative. The velocity function is 12t squared minus 4t in the i direction plus 3 minus 8t in the j direction. The acceleration function is the derivative of that. That's 24t minus 4 in the i direction plus negative 8 in the j direction. I want to know the acceleration when t is equal to 3 seconds, so I just plug in t equal 3 seconds. That is uh, 24 times 3 minus 4 in the i minus 8j and that is uh, 68i minus 8j meters per second squared and that's the answer. At what time is the acceleration in the x direction equal to zero? Well, this function gives the acceleration in the x direction, so I just set it equal to zero. 24t minus 4 equals zero. That is, uh, t is equal to 4 over 24, solving for t, which is 0.17 seconds. What is the magnitude of the direction of the velocity when t is equal to 2 seconds? All right, well, I just plug in 2. That is uh, into the velocity function, 12 times 2 squared, which is 4, minus 4 times 2. It's in the i direction, plus 3 minus 8 times 2 in the j direction. That gives me a function of 40i minus 13j. That's the x and y components, 40 and minus 13. And then to find the magnitude, I just use the Pythagorean theorem. 40 squared plus 13 squared and that's equal to 42 meters per second alright and then I find the angle theta is the inverse tangent of the y component over the x component that is 13 over 40 and that's equal to 18 degrees alright if you put in negative 13 it will come out as negative 18 degrees but you still need to qualify that off the x-axis so this is below the plus x-axis the way that I prefer is just to draw it. If I draw my vector, I know the x component is in the positive x, the y component is in the negative y, so my angle is going to come off like that in the fourth quadrant. Drive the two equations of motion. I was looking that you start from the definitions of acceleration, which is dv dt. dv is equal to a dt integrate both of those, so V is equal to AT plus the constant, which is just, uh, the constant is just the velocity when time is equal to zero, that's AT plus V naught. So the integration constant is the value for V when T is equal to zero, all right, and that gives you V naught by definition. All right, and then you start with this definition that V is equal to DX DT, dx then is equal to v dt and I just plug in what I saw for v at plus v naught times dt is equal to dx. I'm going to integrate on both sides 
and the integral of at is one half at squared plus v naught t plus your integration constant which is just going to be x naught. So I'm going to rearrange the equation like this. That's how we normally see it. Alright, so there are your two equations. Most people either you got this or you didn't get it at all. So Consider this plot of velocity versus time and answer the following questions. What distance does a particle travel between t equal 2, right here, and t equals 6 seconds? Well, to find the distance from a v versus t graph, you just find the area. So I find the area of here. Uh, this, the length of this is 4 seconds would be the units, times the height, which is this, which is 2 meters per second. So that's equal to 8 meters. What is the acceleration at t equals 7 seconds? Right here. You need to find the slope of this line. Alright, the rise is 2. The run is 2. 2 over 2 is equal to 1. And actually the rise is minus 2, so it's going to be negative 1. But if you just look at the slope, you see that it's a negative slope, so you, you should know that it should be negative. What is the average acceleration between t equals 0 and 8 seconds? Well, the position here is 0. Or the, excuse me, average acceleration is delta v over delta t. That's v final minus v initial over delta t. v final is equal to 0. v initial is equal to 0 over delta t. So it's 0 over some number, which is just 0 meters per second squared. And what is the velocity at t equal 5 seconds? So let's see, where is 5? I've written on this thing so much. Oh, it's down here. You just follow over on the graph. It's minus 2 meters per second. All right, you walk east 120 meters, 110 meters at angle degrees, 45 north of east, and then north 150 meters. What are the magnitude and displacement? Magnitude and direction of displacement. So I got 120 meters east. These are my x and y components. 110 cosine of 45. 110 sine of 45, 0 and 150. Add these numbers up, I get 198 and 228. And then the magnitude is Pythagorean theorem, 198 squared plus 228 squared. That's equal to 302 meters. And then if I want to find the angle, it's the inverse tangent of 228 over 198 is 49 degrees above the x-axis. Alright, you throw a ball from the ground to a height of 10 meters and returns to your hand answer the following questions regarding its motion. I gave you a hint that you should consider only half the motion and let it, the initial state be at the top of the trajectory. Alright, so you have this ball goes up and it comes back down. And I suggested that you consider this state so that your v naught is zero and that makes finding the time a lot easier. Right, so how much time is required for the ball to return to your hand? I've already said that V naught is equal to zero and that our, our Y displacement then is going to be uh, minus 10 meters. So if I let this be Y naught is equal to zero then this is Y equal negative 10 meters. And I know my acceleration so I can uh, say Y is equal to Y naught which is zero v naught t plus one half a t squared. This goes to zero. So y, which is minus 10, is equal to one half of minus 9.8 times t squared. If I solve this for t, I get t is equal to 2.8. Or excuse me, t is equal to 1.4 seconds. But that's only for half the motion. And so the total time is twice that, or 2.8 seconds. What is the velocity of the ball at the halfway point in its descent? Most of you assumed that this was the halfway point in time, but I intended it to be the halfway point in distance. That is, what is the velocity of the ball at x equal 5 meters? I gave you credit if you consider it at the time because I realized it was ambiguous, but on the final, if you see something like this again, I might phrase it in that way more particularly. So let's play it the way that I, I wanted it. Uh, at the halfway point, that would be y is equal to minus 5 meters. 
And so I would say minus five is equal to V naught T plus one half A T squared. This is zero. So I just solve this for uh, T and I get T is equal to one second. All right, and then I find the velocity. which is really what I'm looking for. That's equal to zero plus minus 9.8 times one, which is minus 9.8 meters per second. What is the velocity at the ball at the bottom just before it hits the ground? Well, you just say V is equal to V naught plus AT. You know the time, but you have to use the 1.4 seconds because we're looking for the time to go from here to here, and we want to know the velocity at the bottom. So it's zero plus minus 9.8 times 1.4 is 14 meters per second.